Hi everyone, it's Marissa Williams at Southern Technical College and today we're going to go over what is an APA paper. Um, there's actually four main parts of an APA paper. First is going to be your title page and um, it has a slightly different look to it. It basically looks like this. You're going to center in the middle of the paper basically if you can get the whole out view of that. Um, that's where you want your title, your name, the college, and it says the instructor's name and due date, but I will caution you to always double check with your instructor. Some people want the um, name of the assignment. Some people don't care if you put Southern Tech on there or not. Um, so this can vary by teacher as far as what they want, but usually you at least have the title of your assignment, your name, and like I said, the instructor's name and due date so you know which class you're talking about. Some instructors prefer the course name instead of the instructor name. So that's why I say double check with your instructor to see what their, prefer their preference is. The big thing that they have is a title. And you'll see these words, running head. Do you have to have them on the first page? Yes, because that basically tells people this is the title of your paper. Um, they say not to do more than 50 characters or spaces because you will run out of room up here. Um, so you basically have 50 characters to put your title in there. Um, you can make that a shortened version of your title if you need to. Again, your full title is going to appear underneath that. But if you notice on that same line up here in the header, they actually have your page number. And on the first page, you do want to include your page number. Now, the nice thing is for the formatting, if you go into Microsoft Word, and I have it pulled up on my screen here, um, you'll see this templates page. And of course you can do a blank document, but if you scroll down, which we're gonna try to do this here, um, you should find an APA document. And if you look right here, it says APA Style Report 6th Edition. Now, um, this is going through my computer by just typing Word into Cortana here and getting this to pull up as a template page. Um, I do want to just show you on your email, if you go up into the top corner, you will see that there's a little square button here in the top corner under portal. If you click that, you will pull up your apps. On your apps, you can also select Microsoft Word. Okay, in doing that, it will still pull up this blank page. It's gonna look a little different. Now, if you look here, you're going to see it also has APA style paper. So you can click that and get to that same format. What I will say is that the online version is a little different, specifically because this title page is different. Okay, so you may have to make some adjustments if you're working from Microsoft Word in your email. Okay, now if we click back down to the original one here, let me just pull it up and show you the difference. And you go to the APA style report and we're gonna just create, give it a second to do its thing. Now on this one, you'll see that that running head comes up there. Now, big thing, if you're working from the template, if you're down here, notice how this is black and this is gray. To get up into the header, you gotta double click. Okay, now I can type whatever I want in here and I can just type title just to kind of show you it automatically will capitalize that there and notice your page number automatically comes up where it should be to get back here if i click it once it doesn't do anything i gotta click it twice to get back down here okay now from here i can put my title in all that good stuff i'm just gonna start with putting my name i'm just gonna put it out so you can see how that works again you just click on it you start typing so i'm gonna click here Again, I can just put STC just to start typing. I just want to kind of show you guys that. Now, below that on the computer version, you'll see that it has author note, and you don't necessarily need that. If you're going, um, you'll see that it says include grant funding information for a complete correspondence address. We don't need that. Um, not for the purposes of classes. You, I don't think anyone's going to mark you down if you include it, but you don't necessarily need it. Okay. Um, so that's our first page. Second page is our second part. That's the abstract. Abstract is a condensed 
um, form on the paper. Um, whatever it says there, let me just tell you what I think it is. I think it's just a short summary of what your paper is supposed to be about, okay? Now, they recommend 150 to 250 words. That's not absolute. I mean, people can go longer or shorter, um, but that's a general good word. Underneath, you'll see it says keywords. Click to add keywords. You don't necessarily need that for the purposes of the college. Um, keywords are only if you're going to upload those into Google or something where people are going to be looking for it. Good example when you're using our Learn database, that's the L-I-R-N. Um, when you're looking through there, you usually see the abstracts of papers before you read them. So it's just a short little paragraph just saying what the paper is about so you know if you need it for a resource or not. Maybe you start reading the abstract and you're like, well, that's not what I'm looking for, and you move on. And so that's the purpose of an abstract is just let people know what is your paper about. If somebody's searching for it and they want to just have a brief synopsis, a general overview, that's what your abstract is. So again, 150 to 250 words. I generally think it's a little easier to write it at the end because sometimes when I'm writing my abstract, I might have a great intention that my paper is going to go one way and then come to find out it takes a little bit of a turn. So that's why I say your abstract can vary a little bit, okay? Um, but sometimes it's easier to write it at the end because you know for sure what's on your paper. So on this outline, it does say that the word abstract should be centered, not bolded, not formatted in italics or with question marks or underlines or anything like that. Very plain and simple. You'll see on the second page, your title or your running head appears again, whatever you title it as. And then the page line again on that same line. Um, notice that the words running head do not appear on the second, third, fourth, or any page after the first page, okay? So if you notice that it's gone, don't freak out. It's okay. You only need it on your first line. So again, your abstract is just a short summary. It should be your second page. And keywords you don't necessarily need. If you want to use them again, I don't think anybody's going to mark you down for it. But keywords are just generally thinking if I was going to search for your paper in Google, what keywords would I put in to find it? Okay, that's what keywords are. All right, so the third part is just your body. That's just the body of your story. What are you writing about, right? So um, you do want to have in-text citation. I will go over in a different video in-text citation versus reference citation. There is a difference. Um, and the last part of your paper is your reference page. So you have your body and your reference page. Now, the general rule of thumb is if it appears on your reference page, it should appear as an in-text citation at least once somewhere in the paper. And let me just flip over to the reference page. So your reference page will be the very last page on there. And it's basically just saying this is the information that I used in the paper. So our body is where we're actually going to write. We can have headings if we want to. Um, you don't generally need headings if your paper is only like a page or two. So don't feel obligated like you have to have that, okay? But your last page is going to be your reference page. And it has a specific format. The nice thing is if you're using the LIRN website, it will automatically format it for you. Um, basically, you need your last name of the author and then the first initial, the year, and, and the article title or the book title and it'll vary whether you're doing a book or an online publication or things like that. Um, Sitefast.com, C-I-T-E-F-A-S-T, -E is a good one if you need to format something into the proper um, uh, format. Another one that I really like is Night Sight. I actually like that one better, but it's Night, K-N-I-G-H-T, C-I-T-E, and <clears throat> let me just kind of show you what that looks like. Whoops. Night Sight. I find it's it's pretty easy to use. Now when you see it, it it's going to come up looking like Night Sight Citation Service, Calvin University. And we are going to go into APA. So you can just click on that. And that's what it's basically going to look at like. Now this is for formatting a book. If I need to change it, I can go over here. A lot of people have online documents. So online, and basically you fill in what you know to find what you don't know. 
So if I have a normal author, I can have an unknown author. Sometimes I don't know. Maybe I have more than one author. So I just click it in here and put as much as I can. So I'd say, how many authors are there? I can put how many there are, and it'll put, like, if there's four authors, it'll give me space to put all four names. Okay? So first name, middle initial, last name. Does your website have a title? Yes. Now, if I'm going to Mayo Clinic, they have a lot of articles in there. So the website title would be Mayo Clinic, and the document title would be that specific article I'm looking at, maybe something on osteoporosis on the Mayo Clinic website, right? Um, you want to put in if there's a date, sometimes there's a date, sometimes there's not. If you're online, we do want to include the URL, just paste that in there exactly what it is. You can just highlight the top of the page, do a control C to copy, go into the URL box, do a control V like Victor to paste it. And was this found using a database? If you're using Learn, L-I-R-N, then that is a database. But if you're not, if you're just doing a Google search, then it's no. Okay, um, date of access, some professors like it, some don't, um, but basically you just hit submit, it formats it for you, and you can put it into your paper onto the reference page. So again, it kind of does the hard part for you, so nothing to be scared of or anything like that, but um, the body, like I said, um, Spacing after periods, we need two spaces after a period. I don't know if you see that in bold there. And regular spacing is just one space. If you want to indent at the beginning, um, you can use the tab key at the beginning of each paragraph if you are unfamiliar with that. That is located above your caps lock and it automatically puts in five spaces. If for some reason you don't like using the tab key, you can put in your own spacing amount. Big thing is, is we want the paper in Times New Roman 12 point font, okay? Again, Times New Roman 12 point font. That's what any APA paper is gonna be in, just Times New Roman 12 point font. You do wanna have double space. Notice how these paragraphs have a space in between each line. That's double spacing there, okay? Now the cool thing is when you're using those templates, it's gonna do that for you automatically, okay? Now, Again, remember, reference citation versus insect citation. On your reference page, you're going to have a gobbledygook of a line, last name, da 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 da. When you're listing it in the body, you just need the author, last name, and year. And you can write that by Brown in 2008 showed blah blah blah. Or in 2008, Brown reported. Doesn't matter how you do it, you just have to have the author last name and the year. That's the two things we're looking for in those in text citations, okay? Um, and really, it doesn't matter if it's from a book, a journal, or whatever. Big thing is the author last name and the year. If you don't have the author last name, then use the article of the title. Okay, so here's some examples of what that looks like. I'm gonna do another video just on the difference between in-text versus your reference page, but that should at least get you started, okay? So if you have any questions, you can email me, mwilliams at southerntech.edu, and have a good one.